Welcome to the show. How are you today? Oh, I'm doing very well. Thank you for having me. For people who don't know, Stryker is a very influential and well-known dissident in America. He's a white advocate and one of the co-founders of the National Justice Party. Most of my audience is Polish. Could you explain what the National Justice Party is? Yes. So uh, Stryker is my nickname. Um, my real name is Joseph Jordan. Uh, I'm the information officer at the National Justice Party. Uh, the NJP is a new organization. It started in 2020. Uh, and we are a uh, nationalist. We are pro, uh, pro-white. And we are um, very much, um, let's just say, in the radical nationalists. Uh, I, I think that would just be the perfect way of explaining it. So um, we have a 25-point platform that you can find on the website, nationaljusticeparty.com. We focus a lot on educating our people. We also are uh, very much active in the real world. We do a lot of charity work. We um, uh, Last Christmas, we bought Christmas gifts for dozens of, of uh, impoverished families and uh, we have real life conferences multiple times a year, which attract hundreds of people, which uh, maybe for our, our, our Polish friends is not a lot, but in the United States, it's, uh, not, it's pretty good. So um, yeah, that's about a good summary of it. You guys had a protest in Waukesha. What was that about? Okay, so in the United States, uh, a few months ago, a uh, black anti-white racialist uh, ran over a Christmas parade of women, children, and old people. Um, in, in the United States, the media is very tightly controlled, and they hid this terrorist attack. There were several people killed and even more injured, including little children. And so we decided to turn this into our cause. And uh, it began with an article because I'm also a journalist and I, I'm an independent journalist at national-justice.com. <clears throat> and uh, I wrote an article uh, with my research showing that this man, this black man who ran over these, these women and children was harboring violent sentiments towards whites before he attacked. So I put this information out there it became viral on the internet and it started many debates. Then the NJP organized a demonstration in front of the courthouse where this criminal was being held. Uh, and we, we stood there with the town, we spoke to the locals. We're also making a documentary that should be released in the coming weeks. Um, about the incident and the experience of the people there and how they are essentially being silenced. I mean, for people in Europe, I understand that a lot of them seem to think that Americans have free speech. That couldn't be further from the truth. In fact, I would argue that there are parts of Europe, uh, possibly even Poland, where you have, in many respects, more freedom to speak your mind and politically manifest your ideas, more freedom than we do in the United States. In the United States, we are uh, heavily pressured by the world's most advanced surveillance and intelligence state uh, apparatus in the, and uh, one of the more abusive oligarchies that is completely unaccountable and a, and a, a corporate private oppression class seen through social media companies like Facebook and Google who spy on the population and censor all types of ideas just so our Polish friends can get an idea. In the United States, you get censored on social media, Twitter, Facebook, for saying that a biological male, a man, can't be a woman. That is something that in this country, if you say that out loud, you lose your job, you get banned from social media, 
you lose your ability to use online banking like PayPal and various other services like Stripe. Um, and in some cases, you might even get communists and anarchist groups harassing you and your family in person, and the police allow it. Um, so this is a nightmare, this country. Yes, uh, I would agree with you that in Poland, we kind of are an island of tolerance of different points of view. Um, you can have a lot of viewpoints and they aren't restricted. Um, I grew up in the West and people always looked over their shoulder. Here, you, know, you can express yourself more freely, with more tolerance to opinions, but we do have laws against certain types of speech. One type of speech that there are no laws against is against sexual identity. So legally, you can say anything you want to, about homosexuals. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. Well, see, the, in the United States, the way that oppression works is that it's privatized. So the government will pretend that it's got nothing to do with it. But these private corporate actors, these private cap capital which is very concentrated in the United States. So something like 10% of the population controls uh, around 85% of the stock market and so on. Um, these individuals, many who happen to be of Jewish ancestry, uh, are very organized and they use all the tactics they can uh, up to and including physical violence against people like myself and NJP and others who decide to make common sense, give the opinions that everyone is thinking. Another thing too about Eastern Europe is that because you had an experience with communism very recently, there's almost more of a taboo against putting people in prison for their beliefs. In the United States, that taboo is gone. Um, mm -hmm. We have many instances, very scary actually, where intelligence agents at the FBI will infiltrate a group and then frame the members for a crime. And it's usually something that you would never guess is a crime, like, uh, you know, smoking marijuana while owning a gun. So in the mm -hmm. United States, in many, in many districts and states in the United States, it is legal to both own a gun and smoke marijuana. Mm -hmm. The government, however, federally, the FBI operates on federal law. Federally, marijuana is still legal. So what they do is they'll infiltrate a nationalist group and look out for anyone who is a legal gun owner who uses drugs like that, something that, that they assume is legal, and then trick them and arrest them for being a, a gun owner as a drug user, which is a federal crime, and give them three years in prison. Mm -hmm. um, very scary. You have to be very careful in the United States uh, because there are so many laws. Again, they don't put you in prison. They don't give you the dignity of putting you in prison for your beliefs. Instead, what they do is they manufacture crimes and they frame you for crimes in this country. It's quite remarkable. It's very much actually like in, uh, you know, uh, part, partially in communist Poland or in the Soviet Union, how they used to apply the anti-terrorism laws to, mm -hmm. to shut down dissent. In the United States, it's exactly the same. Yeah, uh, and a lot of Polish people are waking up to this, uh, especially with January 6th. Um, a lot of conservative uh, people here saw what happened to the January 6th protesters and didn't think it was correct and that uh, the government was too heavy-handed in their approach. In January 6th, very famously, a black man shot an unarmed white woman who was protesting, shot her in cold blood. Nothing happened to him. In fact, in the United States, the man is being portrayed as a hero for killing this woman. Um, there's a journalist in the United States called Taylor Hansen who investigated the other deaths that happened on that day on January 6th. And he found that actually it wasn't only that woman, Ashley Babbitt that the other people who died that day, there were about five other deaths of Trump supporters and the media in this country, all of the media came together and said that they died from natural causes, heart attacks, uh, you know, stroke and so on. 
Well, I, I read initially that uh, one guy repeatedly tased himself in the testicles. I remember hearing oh, that in yeah. the news. Yes. So this is what they so this is what actually happened. And there's actually video footage. Taylor Hansen on Substack has it. Uh, he posted a video of one of the people that died. Um, and her death was listed as a natural death, but there's actually a video of another black police officer beating her with her with the baton or a stick over and over. The woman was on the ground, and this police officer was hitting her in the head over and over and over and over until she died. Mm -hmm. And her death was registered as a natural death. So January 6th, let's just get this off the table. It was actually almost like a Tiananmen Square of the United States. But yeah. because of the, the sophistication of the American media apparatus, they have hidden that not only from the world, but even from much of the American people because of how few people control the media and how much tight control they have over it. Yes. And when you read about the conditions that these prisoners are in, it's very inhumane. One thing that strikes me is that in the D.C. prison where these people are being held, the guards are Africans, not African-Americans. They're just yes. Africans. Yes. Uh, and from a Polish perspective, could you imagine having Ukrainian prison guards guarding <laughs> over political prisoners? Right? Like, uh, <laughs> it seems hostile. Uh, well, I'll, yeah. I'll, mm -hmm. I'll say this. So there's actually been... So I don't know how it works in Poland. But in the United States, um, what they did to these people is that they charged them with a crime, but they haven't been, uh, they haven't gone to trial yet. They have been in those jails, those, these are the D.C. jails, Washington, D.C. jail is the dirtiest, most violent, abusive. People get killed there. They get beaten there. They're tortured. They're, they, they're not given food, these uh, January 6 prisoners. They, uh, one man lost his eyesight from how badly the prison guard beat him. Uh, these are people, by the way, who are country people. They're farmers and car, you know, auto workers. They're factory workers. They're working class white people from rural areas. They're not criminals. They, they're Christians, they, they, they pray and so on. And um, the guards have just tortured them, tortured them. And um, I think the, um, the, the most uh, telling thing about it is that none of the people that are in this jail have been convicted of a crime. So the crime has not even been proven. So I'll tell you what they're doing. They are using COVID as an excuse to keep them in the jail without a trial. So they're saying, we are overwhelmed. We are understaffed. We don't have enough workers in the court. So we're going to keep these people in jail for a year now. They've been there for a year now without seeing a judge, hmm. without being convicted of a crime. So these people are just being tortured. Yes, it does seem horrific. And as I said, now if we're waking people up here uh, and around the world about the reality of the situation in America, uh, I would like to circle back to the social media stuff, because you were talking about how in America you don't have political uh, freedom and freedom of speech because of social media monopolies. But this also affects us here in Poland. A couple of weeks back, Confederacja, which had the largest political um, a page on Facebook with over, I think, around 700,000 members wow. with banned. Yes. And uh, in Poland, Facebook is by far the number one way to engage politically, much more so than Twitter or something like that. Uh, oh, Facebook just decided to ban it. Uh, so I was wondering, what if the National Justice Party's policy to regulating these social media monopolies? Well, I, you know, we might, uh, we might have different solutions to this, but ours is to nationalize them mm -hmm. and apply First Amendment protections, the right to free speech to them. The way they're able to get around the First Amendment, the legal protection for free speech, is that they're privately owned. 
And of course, Mark Zuckerberg is no friend of any of us uh, for mm -hmm. some obvious reasons. And uh, what they do, and they do this to everyone, they ban, uh, th these are the people that get banned. So I am personally banned from Facebook. Um, any political idea or project I have is automatically banned from Facebook. And by the way, I do not preach violence or sedition or anything even close to that. I am simply a journalist and a uh, public advocate. Um, and yet I am very much banned, not just from Facebook, but from all social media, except from Telegram and my own personal website. So that's the first thing. So yes, the National Justice Party's idea is to nationalize this company and apply the protections that you expect. You remember, uh, again, back to the Soviet comparison, in the Soviet Union by the 1960s, 70s, and 80s, they weren't always putting critics of the government in prison anymore. What they were doing is that if they didn't like something you did or said, they would simply refuse to publish your books. So the, the political officers controlled the printing presses and they didn't put you in prison all the time. They just yeah. said, we're not printing this. And that's uh, Vipin, how it works. Yes. Yeah, a very old joke that in the Soviet Union, you have a freedom to write whatever you want as long as you immediately ate the paper, right? But you could write anything yeah. you want. Oh, well, that is exactly how it works in the United States. Again, for people outside of this country, the United States does a very good job, the media here, creating a fictitious image of America using Hollywood, using all these different uh, uh, soft power of, of the internet, of uh, social media and so on. But the reality is that, like you said, you, you said you lived in the West, you know this, uh, people here are afraid to even talk amongst their family and friends in case someone is listening, okay? Mm -hmm. Because if someone hears you, they may not always put you in jail for it, but you will lose your job, okay? You how, will lose your rations card. How common do you think these beliefs are? They are very common. The only reason why there hasn't been a political, a, a coherent political organization uh, that competes realistically for power for, in elections is because of the state of terror, of political repression the American people live under. Remember, the surveillance, a, a lot of things in America are falling apart, but the surveillance state, the, the culture of uh, ratting on each other, of telling on each other, uh, people that want to advance in the system will find someone who has a dissident opinion on any issue, race, gender, homosexuality, they will, or, or even in some cases, even Israel, and they will uh, find their dissident opinion and show it to their boss. That person becomes unemployed. Then that person gets attacked in the media their name and reputation is attacked and you can never find a job or a decent job ever again. You become mm -hmm. blacklisted. That's what we call blacklisted. That they, your name is put through it. And I'm going to tell you something. At this point in this country, there are probably millions of people that are blacklisted hmm. that, that, that cannot work in a, a middle-class, decent white collar or uh even many blue collar jobs um okay. we, we call white collar office jobs you cannot get an office job if you have been uh what we call doxxed or identified by the media as a political dissident for example uh tony hovader tony hovader who is in the njp as well mm -hmm. um he used to work at a at a family-owned restaurant and when his information was published by antifa anarchist groups uh, they called his the media went and they harassed his employer they they, they harassed the anarchists harassed him and the family-owned business which employed tony and his wife where they worked as cooks i believe um they fired them and you know what the worst part is they they what i heard they told them uh that they knew didn't have a problem with their beliefs or their ideas or anything, you know, possibly even agreed with them. But mm -hmm. they said, we will be attacked if we don't fire you. 
So that's how terrified everyone is in this country. It does sound a lot like communism. My Polish people will be, ah, <laughs> I remember well, that. I, yes, I'll say this. America is communism, but without the safe and clean streets. So it's just the worst of all, <laughs> without the worst of all worlds. That's what it is. <laughs> right. It's the worst um, of capitalism, the worst of communism. Yeah. And you often say you're not a conservative. Uh, this might come of a shock to Polish people, right-wingers, because right-wingers here are almost always conservatives. Why do you say you're not a conservative? Well, there are two reasons for that. One, um, I do not have uh, perhaps a – I have some beliefs shared with them, but I am not a reactionary. Um, you know, I am a person that believes in, in to some extent in the time and place – but more importantly, I believe that in order to defeat the institutional revolution of the liberal left and the neoliberals, you need to have your own institute, your own revolutionary idea. So I always compare it to when there is an out of control fire, the way you stop the fire is by lighting your own fire. And so we need a revolutionary ideology not simply to think in terms of yesterday and today. We also have to think about tomorrow. Um, and furthermore, conservative in the United States likely means something very different than in Poland. Now, Poland, the Polish right, has been heavily influenced by the American right, which is not a good thing. I will warn my Polish friends, it's not a good thing. Uh, in the United States, a conservative is someone who uh, believes in fighting wars for Israel, someone who uh, is weak on immigration, someone who believes in uh, deregulating absolutely everything in the economy, doesn't believe in uh, you know workers' rights or anything. So these are things that I think are um, negative, and also. Mm -hmm. Most importantly, conservatives in the United States are completely impotent. We call them yesterday's liberals because whatever liberals are preaching today, the conservatives will preach tomorrow. They have no lasting, standing, solid principles to weather the advances of the left. So mm -hmm. that's something that I feel that uh, uh, the our, our Polish friends should keep in mind whenever you have some uh, American like Rod Dreher visiting your country to tell you how to do politics. Keep in mind that Rod Dreher has never won one single political victory in the United States. You are being duped. Yes. Uh, Rod Dreher, he recently was in a Fox News documentary about Orban. Um, how about let's uh, talk about what European political parties you like? What political parties or organizations in Europe do you like? Yes. Um, so I, 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 I was familiar for years because I've been doing this for a long time. I was familiar in your country with NOP. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know about ON. These are groups that ONR. Feel, yes, ONR. These are groups that, that uh, share much of my perspective. I, I'm not as familiar with your group, but I read about them. I agree with much of it. Um, and um, the rest of Europe, um, patriotic alternative in Britain. Um, we have the National Party in Ireland, um, also the Nordic Resistance Movement in Sweden, mm -hmm. um, the Casa Pound in Italy, um, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, and, and, and in Spain, we have, um, you know, the, the Falange, the Falange, and, um, um, DN, uh, mm -hmm. Democrazia Nacional, and, okay. uh, yeah, so that's the general idea, and of course, and, I, and in Hungary, uh, Legio Hung Hungaria is a group that we uh, support to uh, ideologically have a lot in common with. That should give uh, Polish people a good background on your viewpoints for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, my party, Ruknardowy, I think a very good party. It's part of Confederacja. Uh, do you know much about Confederacja? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I remember seeing things from them. They, they, they say things that in America would be impossible to say. Yes, um, absolutely. 
I, I have some disagreements with their ideology, but I, I support generally what they, what the, at least many of their talking points um, well, about Polish nationalism and so on. Yes, go ahead. Well, the nice thing about Confederates is if everyone has a disagreement because it's a coalition of nationalists, monarchists, and libertarians. So on right. basically any issue, you'll have people taking opposite uh, viewpoints. For example, Facebook banning Confederates uh, Facebook page, right? The nationalists right. kind of have the same approach as you did. Oh, we need the government to get involved. We need regulation. There's an election coming up. These guys can't be influencing the election. We need uh, these companies to obey Polish law, and we need the government to enforce these uh, regulations. The libertarian wing, very principled libertarians, they said, well, you know, free company, they can do what they want. Yeah, well, I I obviously have my own opinion on that, but I don't want to uh, worsen whatever uh, tensions there may be in a group with monarchists, nationalists, and libertarians. <laughs> I'll, I'll just stay out of that one. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Okay. Uh, is there anything else you would like to talk about? Uh, yeah, uh, I thought, because you you and I have discussed this, you know, the, the controversy of the, the Jewish property law in Poland, mm -hmm. I've um, I thought I could give an American perspective on that. Um, Please go ahead. Yeah. So what, what I might, so this is, so Poland is in a geopolitically in a very complicated place, just like Hungary, right? It's a country that's been occupied, invaded by everyone at some point. And, uh, you know, I understand why, some Polish, some some factions in Poland seek to get close to the United States. Okay. Um, however, that comes with a price. What I always say is, 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 this is kind of vulgar, but what I always say is when you get in bed with Uncle Sam, you're going to get a sexual transmitted disease. <laughs> so, just so you know, yes. no one. <laughs> no one gets out of that relationship unscathed. You always end up very sick when you get in bed with Uncle Sam. Mm -hmm. And so I would just, as an outsider from the United States, I would warn my Polish friends to be very careful with some of these things like the United States military buildup in Poland. They have a base mm -hmm. there because whatever benefits the Polish people get economically – from uh, pre preferential trade, perhaps, from the United States or investments, uh, whatever they may get, even from deferred military defense from the United States. That comes with a trade. That means you have to tolerate the, e e the export of American pop culture, which is, you know, it's manufactured entirely by people of Jewish ancestry, and I will tell you, as someone who is very observant and, and has a good perspective, people of Jewish ancestry do not like Polish people. I would even make the argument that they hate Polish people more than even Germans and Palestinians. Because there's a sort of disrespect of Polish people that you see in a lot of culture created by, by Jewish people in the United States. So... When those people are given access to your minds, they don't have your best interests at heart. And this whole dispute over the property law and how the Polish people are distorting the Holocaust, how they're just as bad as, as the others and so on, all of this is cynical and manipulative. They are trying to get vengeance on Polish people for perceived historical ills, and they're doing it out of spite. Yeah. Not, not just perceived ills. Um, uh, last time we talked, uh, we talked about March 1968. Uh, Jews were yes. basically asked to leave Poland. And not only were they asked to leave Poland, but we took away their passports and citizenship. And after that happened, Poland became a pariah state. Right. So what happened... So one thing I'll say, so I am very much anti-communist, but I'm also fair. The some of the communist governments in Eastern Europe, whatever their flaws were, because uh, because the state was so visible, they had more accountability 
than the power structures of tyrants today, which are invisible. They are in the shadows. They You can't see them. I'll tell you what, Joe Biden, 82-year-old Joe Biden, is not running this empire, okay? <laughs> mm-hmm. He has people behind the scenes that are actually calling the shots. And so that actually, in a sense, makes our governments less accountable because there are hidden politics, hidden interests. There are moneyed interests, bribes, blackmailing. I don't know if in Poland you guys have heard about Jeffrey Epstein, yes, um, the, the Israeli operative that has sexually blackmailed half of our elites and powerful people in this country with mm-hmm. uh, videos and pictures of them having sex with minors. Mm-hmm. He blackmailed yeah, including, him. Yeah, including Clinton when he was president. Well, potentially including even Donald Trump. Clinton, yeah. Trump, uh, Bill Gates was on his plane. Uh, every big name. I mean, even the guy, <laughs> even Stephen Hawking was connected to Epstein. Everyone with any kind of prestige that is not Jewish in this country was in some shape or form in contact with this Mossad operation that Epstein Mm -hmm. was running. And it's not a rumor or a canard. Ghislaine Maxwell, uh, her father was a Mossad agent. The Mossad, Mm -hmm. there's an ex-Mossad who wrote a book about how he recruited Maxwell and Epstein. This is all facts. They've been covered up in the United States. You, you wouldn't believe how well they've covered this up. But this was supposed to be a scandal, but they just made it go away. It's quite amazing. Yes. Well, all Polish people are, they might not know all the details about the Epstein thing, but definitely they know about the control that people with ancestry have over parts of the American government. People don't believe me when I say this, but Zionists in the United States have more power in this country than they do in Israel. Because Mm -hmm. in Israel, there are at least an organized faction of people that resist them, that that have political contacts with the outside world that can help them, and so on. In Mm -hmm. the United States, the white people, the white non-Jewish people, white Christian people have none of that. We have yes. no ability to resist right now because of how tightly controlled everything is. Everyone has to organize even a, a, a speech or a talk. Like here in this country at NJP, we can only organize these in secret with word of mouth. And we still bring out hundreds of people, but it has to be done in secret. Because if we announce our, our political meetings publicly, and again, nothing illegal Nothing outrageous, nothing bad is happening at this. It's simply people discussing ideas. But if Mm -hmm. we announce it publicly, we will be harassed by the police. We'll have anarchists try and, you know, kill us, attack us, kill us. And then if we defend ourselves, we all go to jail. Um, That's how things work in this country. People have to meet in secret. It's really, again... I cannot stress this enough to people outside of America because I know Polish people in particular have a very romantic view of the United States from Mm -hmm. my experience. And that view is either obsolete or wrong. Uh, Yes. Uh, It's been shifting recently, though, and it have even shifted in law and justice. So law and justice were very Philo-American. well, during the Trump era, they would do anything that Trump wanted. But since Biden got elected, they've been shifting to a more, I would say, multi-vectored uh, yes. foreign policy. Uh, Duda, if uh, our president Duda, if going to the Beijing Olympics against American wishes, yes. like things like that, right? So uh, I, I think parts of Polish society are trending away from America. But it's a very hard thing to do um, because, of course... Poland is very fearful of Russia, and we right. need someone to protect us from Russia, basically. Yes. Um, again, it's not my place to tell. I can only give you my perspective from living in deep in the belly of the empire. Um, <laughs> the uh, 
Let me just make a comparison I always make. So I understand the situation countries in Eastern Europe are in, especially knowing their recent history with Russia. Um, but what I will say is that the husband of 30 years who gets drunk and beats you, that doesn't mean necessarily that you should get a divorce and start dating the uh, black pedophile from the bar. <laughs> okay. I mean, there are different degrees. And um, in the case of Hungary and Poland, the wisest thing they could do is not rely on anyone. And what I mean by that is have diverse streams mm -hmm. of trade, you know, trade some with China, trade mm -hmm. some with Russia, and trade some with the EU, trade with the with the United States, but do not go all in and become dependent, essentially a colony of America, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. what the United States wants these countries like Poland to do. They want Poland to be a colony of America so that when they when they want something like to take mm -hmm. Polish people's property for, for supposed ills of world war II, when they want something like that, the Polish people have no choice, but to give it to them. That's why they want to yes. control you. So you have yes. to keep that in mind. And, 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 uh, and you know, the Russians, they have their problems, but they're not, <laughs> I mean, this is my opinion. They're not as bad as America. I mean, look sure. at the foreign <laughs> policy of the United States. The United States invaded numerous countries, Afghanistan, Iraq, Syria, uh, Syria uh, uh, Libya. Uh, there's uh, even support for the Saudis in Yemen. Every single one of these interventions has been chaotic. It's made the countries worse than before, that's for sure. And second, unleashed two things on the world. One, a massive refugee crisis to Europe that Europe has to deal with. Where did all these refugees come from? They came from Afghanistan, Iraq, and Syria in 2015. Mm -hmm. What do these all have in common? These are countries that were bombed and destroyed by the United States for Israel. The second thing that, that the United States' foreign policy created is ISIS. So now, so the, the, the phenomenon of, uh, you know, little girls being murdered in cold blood in Britain, in France, in Germany, the Christmas party run over by a truck. Mm -hmm. This political ideology did not exist when Saddam Hussein was in charge. It did not exist when Assad had control of Syria. This was created most charitably by the power vacuum left by the United States' intervention and uncharitably, perhaps even created, ISIS created by American and Israeli intelligence as an ir ir as a, as a irregular army to be used against Iran and Assad. So mm -hmm. those are the, the, the those are the consequences. Now you compare that to Russian foreign policy; they have only entered the Middle East once in 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 decades, and it was only to do the rational thing, which was they were invited by the Assad government to to defend the government from jihadists, and that's all they did, and they succeeded, and they saved Syria. So you cannot argue that Russia and America are moral equivalents in terms of their foreign policy. Now, I know people are always going to be afraid. You know, the neighbors of Russia are always going to think of all the horrible experiences from famines to mass murders, Katyn Forest, the looting of Poland, um, all these things that the Soviets did. But first of all, the Soviets don't exist anymore. It's a different people, different government. And second of all, uh, those, those things... Uh, are bad, but things the United States does are potentially just as bad. As yes. Saying. Well, like, despite, like, whether what you say is true or not, it's irrelevant from a Polish perspective. Because the Polish perspective is that as Russia gets stronger, Poland gets weaker. A strong Russia is bad for Poland, right? Um, right. right? Uh, and that's the driving force of Polish policy. But of course, uh, I've always been critical of peace's approach, which is, hey, we have this faraway superpower that will protect us um, for the reason that, that you said it brings 
of the ills of America to our country. Uh, Confederacia, and especially Bruknardove, advocates um, multi-vectored foreign policy. Must be friends with everyone. Correct. Right? I will yeah. I will say about um about Poland that um this is you you can survive a war. A people can survive a war. A people can survive occupation. A people can survive even uh you know mass murder like a team forest. A people in general can survive that. What you can't survive is if your heritage and your culture are destroyed forever. Mm -hmm. And you cannot survive the replacement of your people by immigrants, which is, That's I mean, true. Poland, I know Poland is in the European Union, but they haven't seen this yet. However, they will see it in the near future if, mm. if they don't take some action. Uh, uh, Poland actually has the largest amount of immigrants uh, coming to an EU country. Oh, really? But they're Europeans, aren't they? Yes, Ukrainians? but it's still, yes, yes, if uh, all Ukrainians, so basically. Well, there have also been an uptick in Asian migration uh, recently, but we have had more immigrants than uh, even Germany. Um, wow, yeah. Yes. Yes, the, well, just mm -hmm. imagine, though, that that's the beginning of it. That's how it always starts. Yeah. It starts with immigrants that, I know Poland and Ukraine have some very rough history, but... Um, it, it, you know, Ukrainians are, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, maybe I'm just speaking from the American perspective, the, difference, the, 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 the differences between Ukrainians and Poles are very small compared to the differences between a white Frenchman and an African in Paris. Uh, <laughs> yes, but there, there are issues, right? Uh, one issue yes. is that uh, Ukrainians are indigestible, right? If, uh, let's say, a Frenchman moved to Poland, like Chopin father, right? The yes. kid identifies as Polish, but Ukrainians don't. Uh, typically, right? One of the legacies of peace might be that they changed Poland from a Polish ethno state to multiculturalism. Right? I think you know you you people you your people as Polish people. I mean, what I, I I'm horrified as a Westerner as a European descended person. I'm horrified when I see that. Not just the native ethnic British and French and Germans, but white people in general are minorities in London, in mm -hmm. Frankfurt, in Paris, yes. in Brussels. People of European descent are minorities, not even Belgians, not even Germans, not even French. People of European descent are, are, are minorities. And as said, you have, I mean, these are the greatest cities of, of the West. And there are no European people in them. That, to yes. me, you cannot recover from that. That mm -hmm. is something that cannot be recovered from. You can survive a war. But if your people are fundamentally changed, your culture, your heritage, and your history will die and never come back. That is mm -hmm. the cost of aligning with the United States and, to a lesser degree, with the European Union. No, uh, and it's one of the greatest advantages Eastern Europe has, if we can see Western Europe in decay, right? We don't have to do the hypotheticals that the Swedes or the Germans had to do, because we can just say, look at Malmo, look at France, right? Yes. Um, have a very effective argument, just to say, Swedes, look at the problem the French have. Swedes will be a minority in their country in the next 30 years. And that's, if they, and that's if they stop immigration. If they don't, mm -hmm. maybe sooner. So imagine yes. that. Imagine a situation where Polish people are a minority in Poland. It's un isn't unimaginable yeah. now, but like, why not? It was unimaginable to say that about Ireland 30 years yes. ago, but like it could happen. Unimaginable to say that about Canada 30 years ago, but I think they're on the same trajectory. Canada um, will be minority white in the next decade. If if a mm -hmm. yes. it's a very dangerous mix to become a minority, especially when you're a hated minority, because oh yes, uh, right, like the media, the society is very anti-white, mm -hmm. and have you become a minority, that can become a very dangerous situation, like perhaps well, in the, the South Africa the, type of thing. South Africa, the United States, in the United States, white people are treated as not first, not second, third class citizens. 
the media openly, the media in this country openly calls for violence against white people. They call for, uh, we have many policies that discriminate against white. Remember, white people are only now 55, 60% of the population. And as our numbers drop, as our numbers drop, the discrimination gets worse. It's not like when they first pitched the quotas, the racial quotas in schools and jobs, they said, this is only to help minorities be more represented. Now, people mm -hmm. of European descent, a non-Jewish white person, white man, is maybe 10% of the Harvard student body. And of those 10%, most of them are gay or they have parents that went to Harvard and got them in through legacy. So mm -hmm. we are being locked out of the elite. Uh, I saw a study where even ads and tel on television, white people do not get portrayed at all in on television now in the United States, mm -hmm. just invisible. Um, and, uh, or, or if they are portrayed, they're portrayed as gay or there's something wrong with them. Normal white people yeah. are invisible in the United mm -hmm. States. And on top of that, uh, here's another thing. Polish people, keep this in mind and look it up for yourself. Uh, there are now increasingly the court system does not prosecute or convict blacks who murder whites. So I want Polish people to look up the case recently of Billy Chermomir. He was a Kenyan illegal immigrant who is believed to have killed something like 70 or 80 white people. He was a serial killer. 70 or 80 white people killed by this man, suspected. They put him on trial. He was, he was prosecuted, put on trial, and the black people on the jury refused to convict him, and he beat his case. He got a mistrial. What? You heard what, me he, right. 70 to 80 people? Yes. One of the most prolific serial killers in history, potentially. Okay. Um, was it the recent court case? Yes. It hmm. was last year. Okay. He was being only accused of 12, I believe, 12 murders, but he is suspected of many more, and they could not convict him. Yes. And this is and just a big case. This, this happens in smaller cases all the time now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, if very um, commonly said, but imagine if a race were reversed. It would have been a huge story, the juror who refused uh, to convict a white guy who murdered black people, uh, yeah. doxxed, like, harassed, yeah. fired. Well, you know what happens in the reverse because um, the, the jury in two recent cases of white people defending their lives from black attackers, they got sentenced to life in prison. The McMichaels, mm -hmm. Travis McMichael. He was on video defending himself from a black who tried to take his gun from him. Mm -hmm. He shot the black, the black criminal, and the uh, pro politicized prosecutors in this country put him on trial for murder. And they had uh, Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton. These are two men, two black figures that are known for organizing riots and killing people uh, that lead to deaths of white people. They were in the court. And so the white jurors convicted them because they were afraid because they had Black Panthers outside. They mm -hmm. had Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton in the court watching them the whole time. I I'm telling you, you guys, you really, this is almost as bad as South Africa or worse, the United States right now. <clears throat> wow. Okay. Uh, and we have time for one more topic. Uh, you wanted to talk about mouse and new narrative that Poles aren't the victims of the Holocaust, but perpetrators. In Maus, which is the big story in America right now, it's not even worth getting into. It's a comic book about the Holocaust that was created by a Jewish pornographer named Art Spiegelman. And uh, in it, Polish people are portrayed as pigs, and they're portrayed as helping uh, the Nazis murder Jews. Mm -hmm. And they're teaching this in school now. They didn't used to. Now they want to teach it in school as an education curriculum. Yes. And you, you see some of the previous hints at this, like Steven Spielberg's Schindler's List, where the little Polish girl is uh, encouraging the Nazis to take away the Jews and things like that. You know, th this is the kind, this is defamation of the Polish people. 
Yes. It's an it's a it's a it's a racial libel. It's a blood libel mm -hmm. of the Polish people. They always claim Polish people blood libeled them, but mm -hmm. they're the ones doing it. Yes, and if revisionists too, right? Mm. And Polish people get very upset over this for many reasons. One is that a lot of Polish people did save the Jews, right? Hi hide them, right? And yeah. when a Polish family was found uh, to be hiding a Jew at certain points in the war, they were killed, right? Yeah. So Polish people think, well, these Jews are very ungrateful. When Donald Trump passed the Never Again Bill, it was discussed in Poland, right? The Never Again Bill is mandatory Holocaust education in America because they were worried Hey, look, you know, what are we going to be teaching these American kids, how it relates to Poland, how it relates yes. to property, how it relates to guilt, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. Yes. That so, is happening. Uh, it, all your worst fears are true because there already was mandatory Holocaust education in the United States. What the new laws do is they teach a new version of the Holocaust story where mm -hmm. the other non-Jews in uh, Eastern Europe and Europe in general are also responsible for, uh, you know, the alleged German atrocities against Jews. So um, what, what happens is that, yes, this is creating the, the education system. And I can tell you just um, an anecdote. Uh, a couple of years ago, there was a Polish historian who visited Brooklyn, Greenpoint, Brooklyn, which has a big Polish community. And he went there to have a historic, and just to, so Polish people can uh, Are you talking about Eva Karek? Uh, possibly, yes. Okay. So he, he gave- She, again, this is, she. This, oh, she, okay. She gave, she's an intellectual. She's a historian. She came to America, supposedly the land of the free, to discuss her historical perspective, not even to Americans, but to Polish, uh, Polish immigrants in Greenpoint. When that happened- the local anarchist and Zionist groups, communist, anarchist, and Zionist groups got together, showed up to the venue where the Polish people were hearing this intellectual speak and threatened them. They, uh, they, 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 they uh, put all their information on the internet. They created a media story about it where they called them Nazis and, and racists. They, they, I, I'm not sure whatever happened to that woman, but um, no, she, she, she was a respected, uh, respected historian in Poland. Yes. Well, in America, very few countries suffered like Poland from the Second World War. Okay. I'll be the first to tell you that uh, Polish people were treated very poorly by everyone in the war. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that wasn't right. Yeah, and, and I understand, you know, uh, Polish nationalists are in a very unique situation historically because maybe different from Westerners because of the experiences of the Second World War. Um, you know, but a, a, a lot of nationalists, but in Poland, being a nationalist is not necessarily, uh, you know, persecuted like in America because, um, you know, it's not like, the Germans were fighting a liberal government. The Poles were nationalists too. Mm -hmm. So this is something that I think creates a stronger heritage for Polish people. And, um, and you know, what, what I was saying though about the Second World War is that um, Polish people suffered more than any other country, like I said, um, go, going all the way to 1989, you know, because I, I think that the Second World War did not end in 1945. Well, the last uh, Polish soldier uh, was killed in, I think, 1963. Oh, was he still, he thought he was still fighting the war or something? Or? He still was, yeah. Oh, uh, have you heard of Accursed Soldiers? Yes, I, I've heard it more in, in, in the Japanese sense where they find a Japanese guy in the jungle and yeah, it, uh, <laughs> it's the 70s and they, and yes, he thinks the it, war's still going on. Yeah. yeah, well, it was very relevant in Poland because uh, after the communists uh, took over, right, uh, they started murdering the home army, right? So right. a lot of home army guys surrendered, and they were actually put in camps like Majanic, right? Um, mm -hmm. Tortured yes. and killed. Um, and with, I believe that Shida Komuna with historical fact, right? Uh, right. I think that community should apologize 
not very well known, but yes, a lot of guys kept on fighting. And it's kind of a controversial thing because it was associated with a right wing in Poland. Uh, right. Like, you know, liberals won't celebrate these people who I think are heroes because right. they were anti-Semitic. Yes. But I also, what, what I meant though, however, was that the war kept going on because the allies, Winston Churchill and Franklin Roosevelt, gave Joseph Stalin Poland. Mm -hmm. And the outcome of the Cold War, what happened during the Cold War, was a direct result of the Allied agreements where the they trail. basically, yes, they, 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 they started the war. Britain and France declared war on Germany over the, the sovereignty of Poland just to give it to the Soviet Union. And, uh, and, and you know, I would argue uh, even more that the, 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 the feel, the, 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 the blowback of the Second World War, if not the results of it, are even relevant today. Because now Poland is, to an extent, under the thumb of the United States in many regards. It's, 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 it's in a situation where it's got the U.S. military, U, it, it, U.S. trade, and so on. So what I mean by that is, you know, the, the Polish people have not tasted freedom, actual freedom over their country and sovereignty mm -hmm. in, in, in possibly 100, 100 years. We should wrap up. Uh, Stryker, do you have anything you want to say before we go? Oh, no, no. Uh, it was just a pleasure to be here. Um, and, um, you know, I wish my, the Polish nationalists a lot of luck. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this discussion. Where can people find your content? I have a, uh, we have the nationaljusticeparty.com and national-justice.com, which is the more journalistic blog.